So in the video today, we are going to talk about arrays. And arrays are really awesome for storing a lot of objects of the same type. And what's great about them is that they have a bunch of slots in them for you to store objects. You don't have to associate items with a name. Rather, you can associate them with a position in that array. And all of the items in our array are going to be of the same type. So we can have an array of numbers, we have an array of strings, we get an array of an object of books. So let's make an example. Let's say a, a bookshelf. So a bookshelf is an array of books. So let's go through the syntax of how we make an array. All you have to say is let bookshelf be, and we're going to say, we're going to identify the books by strings. So we'll say let bookshelf be a string array. And we use these two brackets to indicate array. If it helps you, it's almost like you're making a container and you're going to fill that container. So let bookshelf be a string array and that's our declarative statement. And then you're going to initialize it by saying that equals and then use that container brackets once again. Great, so now we've made a space in memory for our bookshelf array. Let's go ahead and start adding things to it. So. All you have to do for that is you say bookshelf, and then you have to say in those container brackets what slot of the bookshelf you want to put the item in. So we're going to start with zero, which is the first index of an array, because arrays in computer science in general are zero indexed. So when you think of one, actually backtrack, think of zero. So we'll say bookshelf zero equals, and let's say Harry Potter. And let's add a couple more books. So bookshelf one equals cracking the coding interview. And bookshelf two equals green eggs and ham. So now we've just made a bookshelf array with three books on that, sh that shelf. And if we want to confirm that we have three books on our shelf, there's actually a property for arrays called the dot length property that will return for us the length of our array object. So we can say bookshelf.length and let's print this value. So we can say print bookshelf.length and if you run that we should get the number 3 printed on our web page. Great. So that was a lot of code to not only declare a bookshelf array but also initialize the items in the array. We can actually do all of this on one line. So let's give that a go. Uh, let's name our new bookshelf bookshelf2. So let's go ahead and say let bookshelf2 be a string array. And this is where it changes up a little. We're going to say equal. And then we have those brackets, but we can go ahead and fill them already. So we'll say equals Harry Potter, comma, cracking the coding interview, comma, green eggs and ham. So in this line, We've done all that we did in five lines above us. So arrays are great because you can take things out of them. And that's why we use them. So say I wanted to get green eggs and ham from our bookshelf array. I'd go up to the library and she tells me it's the third book on the shelf. So all we have to do, and let's print this, is print bookshelf index 3. And that's going to print green eggs and ham for us. Oh wait, I meant index 2, but as you can see, we accidentally typed bookshelf 3 and what popped up? This undefined message. And that's because if you ask, ask for um, an object or an element in an array that you have in an array slot that you have not initialized, the computer is going to tell you, wait, you haven't defined anything for that slot. Because we don't have four books in our shelf, we only have three. So 0, 1, 2, and index 3 had nothing in it. So we print bookshelf 2, now green eggs and ham prints. Alright, so Kate just explained how we can work with arrays of strings, but we can also make arrays of more complex types that we make, like the book class that we declared before. So let's make an array of books now. So uh, let's call it new library, and the syntax works just like before. We can say let new library be of type book array. So book with a capital B and square brackets after it to say we want an array of and if everything in the array is going to be of type book. 
and let's initialize it to an empty array with just empty square brackets. All right, so we've got our new library that's a book array, but we don't have any books to put inside it yet. So let's make some book instances. Um, so we can say let Harry Potter be a variable of type book, and we'll initialize it to a new instance of the book class. And don't forget your parentheses when you're initializing a new object. And underneath that, we can set the title of the book. So Harry Potter title equals Harry Potter in double quotes. And let's make a second book since we're doing arrays. So we'll say let 50 shades be a book that's initialized to a new book instance. And we'll um, set the title of 50 shades to 50 shades of gray. Alright, so now we've got an empty array that, and we've said everything inside that array is going to be of type books, and we've got two book instances. So we can either say new library at index 0 equals Harry Potter, new library at index 1 equals 50 shades, or simpler, let's just go up to where we declared um, our new library variable and inside the empty square brackets put Harry Potter comma 50 shades. So that'll initialize our library to an array that contains those two books. Great. So let's try printing out one of these things. So underneath all of that, we can say, let's try saying print new library at index 0. And if we save this and run it, we get this weird object object message printed out. Um, and that's because TypeScript doesn't know how to print a book. Um, it knows how to print a string or a number, because um, those kind of make sense to print, right? But a book is this complex type with different properties, and TypeScript doesn't know how to render that as text on the screen. But we could print a property of the book. So if we add dot .title after our book at index 0, we get Harry Potter printed out to the screen. 